what's going on out here, and we've known this for a long time, is that all, everything that goes on in that courthouse, it's a bank. You've got the county recorder. You've got the county uh, auditor. You've got the county treasurer. You've got the county uh, prosecutor. You've got the county court. You've got all the components of a bank, a governmental bank. The Constitution for each state and for the United States of America are nothing more than banking charters, a national banking charter and a state banking charter. That's what they were originally set up for. The Articles of Confederation were an initial cut at setting up a national banking charter in this country. It failed because they had to have 100% agreement between all the colonies before they could release any funds. That's why, basically, the colony, uh, the colonial army, basically almost starved to death because they could not get 100% agreement to fund the Continental Army. One of the states withheld because they were still trying to be in bed with England. Okay, even though they wanted independence, they were afraid that basically if they funded the army, they would be, uh, and lost, they would be ousted by England and punished. So they didn't give their consent to fund the Continental Army. Okay? There's nothing more than banking out here. I've said this all along. The whole Bible is nothing but banking. And then all these religions are nothing but moral items to control your money. Moral issues. Trying to deceive you and keep your funds from you. All these codes of law, all these canons of law, all these bullshit, whatever, out here. They're banking. They're nothing more than like overdraft charges at your local bank. You look at them cross-eyed and they're going to charge you. There had to be a way around all of this. A lot of people thought it was that uh, OP 90 and 91 and the SA uh, or SF uh, 25 form, writing bonds. No. It's the 1455 and the 1522 forms. We, everything out here is a treasury security. Okay? They've either got our signature, our letter of credit in the process, and then placed a lien against it. So we have given a, and we the people are the trustees of America. We stand over these banks. We're the prime customer. The banks can't operate without us. And that's all that this is. Now, I have posted up there also an, an official seal from my county recorder's office. That's an official governmental banking seal. Okay? And that would be needed on the 1455 or the 14 or the 1522 form. That's one of the official seals. Okay? You can also go and get a medallion from a commercial bank if you want to because they're regulated by the state banks out here also, by the state constitutional banking authorities. But why go there when you can go to work with your county recorder or county treasurer or county auditor? They're all banking authorized representatives representatives, and basically they have an official seal, an official banking seal. You can put any one of these into a court action, okay, except for the Social Security, it's got to go to the federal level. 
DD-214 has to go to the federal level or to the Bureau of Fiscal Services. The Bureau of Fiscal Services is the independent treasury that was set up in 1920s time frame. All these bar attorneys, either sitting on the judge or sitting as an attorney, are nothing but brokers. B-A-R. They're broker authorized representatives. Bank authorized representatives acting as a broker. They are to broker these items. You get a tax bill for your property tax. You can fill these forms out. You can take them down to your local bank and deposit right into your account. You can take it into the court and have the court process it up through the U.S. Attorney's Office. Your traffic tickets. You turn around and you get these set up and you get the bill paid out of the appearance bond, the signature that you gave as an appearance bond. Now, some states don't necessarily do that, but basically they are doing that in the background. They're sending you a document for that traffic ticket. Now, one of the things I've said about court actions, and I've posted also a document up there about notice to official uh, enforcement agents. If they're out there enforcing a warrant or any other, a sheriff's sale without an official seal of the court on it, it is not a valid order. Bottom line, that order had to come from a court of record. Otherwise, it was a complete fraud. We have, basically a couple of years ago, or a year or so ago, whatever, uh, we had one of the deputies go out with a warrant to arrest this one guy. Well, he ended up getting shot and killed, and then the guy that shot and killed him got shot and killed later on when uh, the SWAT team came in and took him out. And I'll bet you anything that that warrant that he had did not have an official seal on it. Why? Because the court does not want to be held liable for any action like that. And they knew they couldn't really put out an official item like that. It was only a banking claim. Just like an overdraft on your checking account. When the funds are sitting there, in your account, you've got an insurance policy called the FDIC insurance policy against your account, but yet the bank is putting out a fraudulent claim <clears throat> to try and get more money out of you. And that's what half of these court actions are. They're trying to get more money for their banking court. That court here can be held liable for manslaughter. They can also, uh, the family could turn around and go back after that bank or that court for issuing that warrant to begin with on both sides of the fence for the deputy that got killed and also for the other party if the families want to pursue it. But see, now they know what to pursue. Otherwise, they thought the government just had a free reign to do whatever they wanted to. But it's nothing 
The government is nothing more than a banking house. Bottom line, just like I said, the Bible is nothing more than a banking book of just banking and unjust banking. St. Patrick drove all the snakes out of Ireland back in 3-something A.D. What were the snakes? The bankers. The fraudulent bankers. It's about time we drive all these fraudulent bankers out of this country, too. But you have to know what to deal with and how to set these things off. All these items are basically paid for. I've got the manufacturer's certificate of origin for my vehicle. Okay? I didn't register it with the state. That certificate I can turn around and submit into using these forms to the Bureau of Fiscal Services and get my $25,050 back because it was prepaid. Ford Motor Company went and borrowed against the assets of the We the People tariff taxes that are being held in the Federal Reserve Banks. So they, they owe that much money back to the Federal Reserve Bank in our accounts, our off-budget accounts. Those are debts that are owed to us, we the people. The national debt is a debt that is not owed to the people of the nation on a yearly basis. It's just like the CAFR funds at the state. That is the state debt that's owed to the people. At the end of the year, that gets collapsed and put into the budget in the Federal Reserve Bank under your Social Security number or whatever in off-budget more to main accounts. And then they start all over again. Otherwise, these capital funds would be astronomical. Fifty years of them had enough? Oh, yeah, right. Same thing with the national debt. They just show you the national debt for one year, but they see what is being held in those off-budget accounts, and our accounts, our Mortimane accounts, is astronomical. This nation and most of the European nations are richer than the mind can absorb. You can take a copy of your birth certificate, fill out the form 1455, fill it, and make it the fiduciary in there is going to be your individual banker. That's why you needed to have that individual banker. You'll be processing in uh, from your foreign grant or trust with that birth certificate and then using your fiduciary, the individual banker. And then also complete the same process uh, on the Form 1522 form. You take those down. You don't sign them. You fill out all the information up to the point to where you have to sign it. And then you take it down to your county recorder or whoever you basically have, are in friends with there at the county courthouse. And you get them to sign it, to complete their portion after you sign in front of them. And then make sure they put their official embossing seal on there as an official county courthouse bank officer. Banking officer.
You can take your Social Security card and you can process that up right to the federal uh, district court or the federal bankruptcy court. Your federal taxes, the same way. You can process them into the federal court or into the federal bankruptcy court using these forms. These are the banking forms we need. We are not bankrupt. We don't need to fill out any of the bankruptcy forms in the bankruptcy court. These are our collection forms, processing and collection forms. You need to have a Form 56 so that it shows that you are the fiduciary over that either via foreign grant trust EIN or over the estate EIN person. The Social Security and most all your other instruments are under the estate EIN person. And you're coming in claiming these basically as your estate taxes. These forms aren't that hard to figure out once you understand this. We don't send them to Milwaukee. Okay? We either take them into our court or to our uh, federal district court or the bankruptcy court or to the U.S. our attorney general's office. Or we send them directly to the Bureau of Physical Services at Parkersburg, West Virginia. Okay, unless you have like a Series E bond or something like that, then you would send that into Milwaukee. But everything else goes right through your local courts and those VAR personnel in there, they are nothing more than the courthouse banking brokers. And if they don't do their job, then we will call in the federal bank investigators, the FBI. You can also call in all the inspector generals you want. Because they're all banking inspector generals, depending upon their dis different classification of what banking instruments they're dealing with. It's all about banking. And their fraudulent, religious, moral charges that they try and place upon us when we are not under all of these fraudulent moral religious laws. That was against the First Amendment. They tried to set up certain limits on terms of these banking officers by the Constitutions. But see, most people don't know about this banking system, so, well, basically, having these bar attorneys in there ain't all that bad. But we need to come down upon them and hold their feet to the fire. We are the customers. We own those banks. We're the shareholders of those banks. They work for us. We can shut these banks down if we need to. Or prosecute these fraudulent banking officers in the process. But you have to know what you're charging them with and who you're charging. They're just banking, governmental, constitutional banking Employees.
Benjamin Franklin went over to England, and basically they asked him, how can you basically operate over there in America? And Benjamin Franklin told him, we issue our own money. We don't have inflation. And see, that's what the bankers and basically all the corporations needed to do was to control the inflation. Inflation and deflation, that way they control the people. That's what our founding fathers tried to set up was a national banking system and then state banking systems at the same time. Just banking systems. That's what Andrew Jackson tried to get rid of, was this fraudulent banking system that was allowed to come in under the second national bank, private national bank, into the country. Because Congress couldn't agree upon putting more funds into circulation. And that's what Abraham Lincoln's advisor told him. All you have to do is basically now, since basically Congress has walked out on you, all you have to do is take control and issue more greenbacks. The country, the assets of the country are behind you. Full faith and credit. The treasury is there. More than most people will ever realize. We have two depositaries in this country. There are other world depositaries out there that basically we also have a claim to. But for this country, there are two. One out on the East Coast primarily controlled by Philadelphia, and then one on the West Coast. And basically that one's controlled out of Kansas City. It's located down about five miles underground under Springfield, Missouri. I recently found out that the East Coast is somewhere uh, in uh, located well underground, under West Virginia, close to Philadelphia. That's why there's only been two national treasure uh, movies out here. One for the East and one for the West. The movies have told us a lot of things in this process. But a lot of people haven't seen this. And then a lot of people want to go along with the damn religious bullshit out here of moral laws telling people what they can and what they can't do. Well, basically, if nobody needs a driver's license, well, shit, they'd just be speeding down the road. Most people are not going to go out and try and drive and kill themselves. Okay? That's the problem. Yeah. Yes. You're breaking up, Tom. You're breaking up. I didn't hear what you said. You're, you've got a bad connection, Tom. Get rid of that goddamn Skype and get on a fucking phone. Please. That damn Skype phone is bullshit.
Okay, who's ever unmuted, please mute yourself. We've got feedback coming in. Hopefully everybody's listening to this. If not, I'm backing it up with a recording off my own computer, and I'll post this one. But that's what this is all about, this banking system. And basically the courts are nothing but banking courts. They have a charge, and we have to go in and have it discharged. And basically, if they're coming in with a fraudulent charge, then basically we stand our ground and bring in the banking investigators to investigate this fraudulent banking charge that they're trying to put upon us. This fraudulent moral code. I don't belong to the Amish church. I no longer belong to the Roman Catholic church. I no longer belong to any religious organization that is going to try and put moral controls over me. How can a priest in a Roman Catholic church ever know anything about marriage? They've never been married. It's ludicrous for them to basically sit and tell a married couple what they're supposed to do. That never made any sense. And see, that's what they see the churches all through the Middle Ages. They were out there controlling the money of the people. That's what the Knights Templars were against. They were trying to operate with de jure banking against all of the religious, moral banking agents out there. Please mute yourself. If you've got your mic open, please mute it. Star six. Someone's got their phone unmuted. Please star six. We can hear you talking in the background. This isn't that hard to see what's going on here. Okay? All your mortgages, basically you take them into this banking court. You fill out the form 1455 and the 1522, and basically you get them under the court banking official seals, and you process them through the system. Liquidate those mortgages. Your checking account. Look at the examples that are on the form 1455. They've got checks there. Your assets that when you deposit into the local commercial bank, your assets go into an off-budget account, and then the bank turns around and writes a bank acceptance for those funds to the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve sends the money over to the bank. The Federal Reserve turns around and writes bonds against your account that's held at the Federal Reserve Bank under your Social Security number. Writes bonds against that, ten times the amount of bonds, and turns around and gains an interest off of that to make up the difference and also make a profit. They're hiring your assets out for profit and for hire. That's the same thing they do with your car. When you sign over your car to the state, the state turns around and puts it out as collateral onto the bond market. Then the state makes a profit off of it, and then basically the extra cash goes into the CAFR fund waiting for you to come in and collect it.
that nobody has been doing the collection of their assets. Because they all thought that the government was the one that was controlling everything. That the government owns everything in this country. How damn stupid can people be? The country belongs to the people. It don't belong to the corporations. No land can really be owned by a corporation. It can only be owned by the individuals or the shareholders of that corporation. The living shareholders. Corporations are nothing but a constructed house of cards, and they can always be collapsed. All the different banking houses down through the ages, the Medes, Persians, the Babylonians, the Egyptians, you name it, the Incas, the Aztecs, all these religious banking houses have all collapsed over time. Because of their fraudulent banking practices that they have put and tried to control the people and deprive the people from their just assets that basically they were supposed to have all the way back to basically given Adam control over the earth. We are the descendants of Mother Earth. She is our mother. We came from the ground and we're going back to the ground. That is the only debt that we have is we owe our body back to Mother Earth. Everything else, we have right of usage of it while we are standing above ground. The ground is to support us. We're not standing on quicksand here. And all these house of cards, these corporations, they will fail at one point or another. Just look at some of the big ones. Enron totally went under, basically because of fraudulent monetary practices that they were operating with. But there's a whole list of them out here about these corporations that have overstressed their their usefulness, trying to make a profit for their powers to be at the upper level. Hillary and most of the damn uh, politicians out here are just banking fraud people out here trying to rip the banks off. When do the people say enough is enough? You can take this document that I put up there about the notice of the seal into your sheriff's office. You can take these form 56 or the, yeah, 56, the form 1455 and the 1522 forms in and explain them to the sheriff. Say here, you want to set off your mortgage? I'll help you. You need to get three EINs. An estate, a foreign ground trust, and an individual banker. You set up your own private bank. You don't need these other fraudulent bankers that are charging and using your money and depriving you of your real assets.
turn around and do it like what happened in the French Revolution, when all the military turned around and switched sides and went over to back the people against the monarchy that was controlling the country. It was a banking revolution. The same thing happened here in, a, in this country. The American Revolution was a banking revolution against the fraudulent English banking system, banking houses. And most of the church banking houses that were also here. That's why it took them a little time to try and get everything straightened out, because they had to go against, like the Penn in Pennsylvania, the Penn Trust, that Penn Banking House, the New England out of Massachusetts, the Roman Catholic Banking House. That's what was really taking place with the Declaration of Independence and with the Articles Confederation and then the Constitution of this country. They were trying to adjust and get to a just banking system here in this country. And see, most of these bar attorneys, they have no idea. Most of these local counties, they really don't. But that court, basically that county prosecutor and the court, basically are working for the Attorney General's Office of the state. And I'll tell you, that Attorney General's Office definitely knows about these forms because all of their agents that are working in the Attorney General's Office are brokers. I've proven that. I've seen their titles that these agents up there at the Attorney General's office here in the state of Iowa have. They're brokers. <clears throat> I know a little more about this brokerage system than most people because I went and took the commodity brokers test and basically passed the Series 7 test. I could basically process securities if I went and got uh, fulfilled the rest of my license requirements. I never did, but as a Series 7, I still wouldn't have had the authority to use the official seal or the medallion seal of that brokerage house. That would have had to gone up the ladder to at least a Series 10 broker. You run into some problems with some of these uh, people. You don't argue at the left, at the bottom level. You try and go to the official of that office. You go to the bank. You don't argue with the clerk at the counter. You get a banking uh, account manager or whatever in there. The clerks don't know what's going on. This is all the secret banking system in this country. But keep it simple. 